In this video, let's look at a way for us to start critiquing our surfaces and getting them really accurate and getting rid of some of these minute errors that can run into during design. A tour of what we have here is I have a surface that is a composite of many things. It's got a corridor in it. It's got a bunch of features in it that might have a grading or two in it. It's got some contours in it. And I'm pretty close to being done, but I've got this wavy contour right here. And it's just bugging me to death. And it's not accurate. I need it to go away. So let's go through a way to figure out what's causing it and how to fix it. So first of all, so that everyone understands, you can see here this slope from these two contours does not change longitudinally. So the orientation of these contours beside them should be the same. And this wave should not be there. So if I was to draw along that contour and extend it over here to this scratch line here, that's the orientation the contour should be all the way through. And you see it's kicking here and it comes back and it corrects itself way over here. Well, the first thing I would do is I would switch this to a method that I can see the triangles. So let's turn on some triangles here. And I can see here's our wave. because There's a triangle going through here. So it's connecting to this point. It's connecting to that point. I've got another wavy point coming through here. And then we've got this orientation. By the time it gets over here, on this side of this triangle, it's corrected again. So our problem area is right here between these one, two, three, four triangles. And I can determine from looking at that that the root cause is more than likely this these two blue feature lines. These blue feature lines represent a ditch bottom that are a stepped offset of this feature line. And because they're a stepped offset, they are directly parallel to it and they're the same length. When in reality, since this is a composite slope, I've got this three to one coming down. I need to find where this three to one would meet this ditch bottom. And it's not going to be directly beside it. But these two endpoints need to be pulled back or extended so that that three to one will extend all the way down. Well, let's look at a way that we can determine that. So let me switch this back to our other style real fast. And I'm going to take this line that we drew right here and I'm going to keep it. And um, let me take my tool space here and lock it out. I'm running out of real estate for you all to see. I apologize for that. I have two sites in this drawing. I have my primary site where everything's at, and then I have a temp, which is just for me to play in. And we're going to make us a grading real fast to imitate this three to one, and we're going to make it to where it extends beyond this elevation so these are two foot contours so two four six eight ten twelve so if we make it 20 feet deep we should be okay so let's come over here to grading well first of all let's make sure i've got an elevation on this line and i do so let's go to grading grading creation tools i'm going to make sure that i am on my temp site and if you don't have a grading group you would make a new one and we're going to do relative to elevation. And let's hit create grading. Let's select this object. It's going to make it a feature in my temp, which is fine. And we're going to use, erase the entity and use its elevations. I want to grade to this side, entire length. And let's do negative 30 since that's already in there and a three to one slope. Okay, so there's our grading. Now it didn't make my surface, so let's select that. Let's go to our grading group properties. Oh, it did make it. Just must have it turned off. Yep, and let's turn that display on. Let's turn it to something different. And there's our dummy surface. Now I've got me a dummy three to one plane that is extending, I know it's correct at that point where it started and it's extending beyond the bottom of this ditch. Now what we want to want to do is we're going to use a quick profile to look at these two things. So let's come up here to profile and let's do a quick profile along let's say this line. 
And in here, if you have all of these selected, you can check and uncheck that to clear it. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn on that grading group two surface that I just had and come over here and place this profile somewhere down here, maybe. Okay. So what I have in this quick profile, now remember from previous video that quick profiles are exactly that. They're done quick, they're dirty, and they're temporary. So uh, if I save this drawing or close it, these will disappear. So it's perfect for this type of exercise. So what we have in this profile is the surface that I said choose. So here's our dummy three to one. And it also shows in the profile the object or the entity that I um, selected to cut along. So, and right here is our crossing. So it shows that my feature line and that three to one are overlapping each other. And that's why it's changing the slope. So what I will want to do is figure out how far off this is. I'll draw me a polyline <clears throat> from there at an intersection. I'll hit my F8 to turn on ortho lock. Just get me a couple of tick marks like that. And I will trim this to here so I can get this distance. So I know that my feature line is 4.21 feet too long. So let's come over here. And this is the feature line we chose. I'm going to draw me a circle. That's 4.21 feet. I will select that circle and I will double check the length, the radius. Sometimes when you're snapping the features, this can go a little screwy. So just a little bit of a double check. And let's take that. And um, you cannot trim a feature line around a circle. So I'll, once again, I will draw me a polyline just as a marker. And now I will trim features along this line to here. And I've got my surface set to automatically update. And now we will repeat it for the second one. So I'll come down here. I'll just select this. Delete it. The profile, whoops, profile, quick profile along this right one, grading group two. Okay. Put it over here. Close. Zoom in here. Do it pretty quick. A lot of different individual steps, but it's sounds like a lot more than it is. 2.55. And I obviously have my parent ear set uh, turn on my O snaps. So I'm not always having to right click and turn that on during this exercise. And now we've got all that done, said and done. If I come over here and I just select this graded group, there it is, and delete it because it was temporary. Look at that, it is perfectly the way we want it. So that is a real quick, one of the many ways that you could do it, but using the quick profiles so that you can see them so the steps are determine your area problem, make you a dummy plane, a dummy surface that represents something that you know is supposed to be true, and then use a quick profile to look at it and find the overlap and correct your features. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please click the like button. Feel free to subscribe.